How does that all interplay with the infamous Gill, the go the global interpreter lock? Maybe can you say what the Gill is and how does it dance beautifully with Ace and Kayo? The global interpreter lock solves the problem that Python originally was not written with either asynchronous or or parallelism in mind at all. There was no concurrency in the language. There was no parallelism. There were no threads. Only a small number of years into Python's initial development, all the new cool operating systems like uh, SunOS and Silicon Graphics, Irix, and then eventually POSIX and Windows all came with threading libraries that lets you do multiple things in parallel. And there is a certain, certain sort of principle, which is the operating system handles the threads for you. Mm -hmm. And the program can pretend that there are as many CPUs as, as there are threads in the program. Uh, and those CPUs work completely independently. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have enough CPUs, the operating system sort of simulates those extra CPUs. On the other hand, if you have enough CPUs, you can get a lot of work done by deploying those multiple CPUs. But Python wasn't written to, to do that. Uh, and so as libraries for for multi-threading were added to C, but every operating system vendor was adding their own version of that. We thought, and maybe we were wrong, but at the time we thought, well, we quickly want to be able to support these multiple threads because they seemed at the time in the early 90s when they were new, at least to me, they seemed a cool, interesting programming paradigm. And one of the things that, that Python, at least at the time, felt was nice about the language was that we could give a safe version of all kinds of cool new operating system toys to the Python programmer. Like I remember one or two years before threading, I, I had spent some time adding networking sockets uh, to Python. And they were very literal translation of the networking sockets that were in the BSD operating system, so Unix BSD. But the nice thing was if you were using sockets from Python, then all the things you can do wrong with sockets in C would automatically give you a clear error message instead of just ending up with a malfunctioning hanging program. And so we thought, well, we'll do the same thing with threading. But we didn't really want to rewrite the interpreter to be thread safe because that that was was like that would be a very complex refactoring of all the interpreter code and all the runtime code because all the objects were written with the assumption that there's only one thread. And so we said, okay, well, we'll take our losses, we'll provide something that looks like threads. And as long as you only have a single CPU on your computer, which most computers at the time did, uh, it feels just like threads because the, the whole idea of, of multiple threads in the OS was that even if your, your computer only had one CPU, you could still fire up as many threads as you wanted. Well, within reason, maybe 10 or 12, not 5,000. Uh, and so we thought we had conquered the the abstraction of threads pretty well because multi-core uh, CPUs were, were not in, in most Python programmers' hands anyway. And then, of course, a couple of more iterations of Moore's law and computers getting faster. And at some point, uh, the chip designers decided that they couldn't make the CPUs faster, but they could still make them smaller. And so they could put multiple CPUs on one chip. And suddenly there was all this pressure about do things in parallel. And that's where the, the solution we had in Python didn't work. 
And that's that's sort of the moment that the guild became became infamous. Because the guild the guild was the solution we used to sort of take this single interpreter and share it between all the different operating system threads that you could, could create. Mm. And so as long as the the hardware physically only had one CPU, that was all fine. And then as hardware vendors were suddenly telling us all, oh, you got to paralyze. Everything's got to be paralyzed. People started saying, oh, uh, but we can use multiple threads in Python. And uh, then they discovered, oh, but actually all threads run on a single a single core. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is there a way, is there ideas in the future to remove the global interpreter log gill? Like it's, maybe multiple uh, sub-interpreters, some tricky interpreters on top of interpreters kind of thing? Yeah, there there are a couple of possible uh, futures there. The the most likely future is that we'll get multiple sub-interpreters, which each run a completely independent Python program. Nice. Uh, but there, there's still some benefit of, of sort of faster communication between those programs. But it's also managing for you this running of multiple Python programs. Like, yeah, so which, it's hidden from you, right? The uh, it's it's hidden from you, but you have to spend more time communicating between those programs because the sort of the attractive thing about the multi-threaded model is that the threads can share objects. Mm -hmm. At the same time, that's also the downfall of the multi-threaded programming model, because when you do th share objects. You were and you didn't necessarily intend to share them, or uh, there were aspects of those objects that that were not reusable. Uh, you get all kinds of concurrency bugs, and so the reason I wrote that little blog post about semaphores was that concurrency bugs are just harder. Mm. It would be nice if Python had. Uh, no global interpreter lock, and it had so-called free threading. But it would also cause a lot more software bugs. Uh, the interesting thing is that there is still a possible future where we are actually going to, or where we could experiment at least with that, because there is a guy working for Facebook who has developed a fork of C Python that he called the no gill interpreter, where he removed the gill and made a whole bunch of optimizations so that the, the single threaded case doesn't run too much slower. Uh, and multi threaded case will actually uh, use all the cores that you have. And so that that would be an interesting possibility if we would be willing as uh, Python core developers to actually uh, maintain that code indefinitely. Mm -hmm. And if we're willing to put up with the additional complexity of the interpreter and the additional sort of overhead for the single threaded case. and. I'm personally not convinced that there are enough people uh, needing the speed of multiple threads with their Python programs that it's worth to sort of take that performance hit and that complexity hit. And I, I feel that the gill actually is pretty nice Goldilocks point between no threads and uh, all threads all the time. But not everybody agrees on that. So that is definitely a possible future. The sub-interpreters look like a fairly safe bet for 3.12, so say a year from now. <laughs>